Hey guys, you're watching Python tutorial videos on my YouTube channel Python for Microscopists. In today's tutorial, I'm going to talk about logistic regression and just introduce the background of logistic regression. No real coding is happening. So uh, let's jump into it. First of all, despite its name, logistic regression is actually primarily used for classification type of problems. Uh, let me explain what I mean by that. So let's go back to the drawing board here. So there are uh, two primary types of machine learning algorithms, you know, classes of algorithms that we use. One is for regression problems. Uh, and let me, so one, e I cannot write again on the digital pad. So one is for regression and the other is for classification. Okay. And excuse my handwriting. And the other is for classification. And regression problem is where we are predicting a continuous variable uh, value. So for example, in the last couple of tutorials, I talked about as a function of time, uh, the number of cells are growing Okay, in our experiment. So what that means is, okay, you have a bunch of data points and then we fit this to a straight line. So in future, if I want to predict something at a given amount of time, I can just look at the straight line and say, okay, for that time, I can expect these many number of cells, right? And at this time, you know, for that time, I can expect these number, uh, these many number of cells right there. So this is a regression problem. There we are predicting a continuous uh, value. A classification problem is, uh, let's say you have a whole bunch of cells that you kind of uh, segment out somehow, but then you just need to separate them as bad versus good. I don't know, cancer cells versus healthy cells, bad cells versus good cells. Uh, in, the, in the previous example, we actually talked about, uh, in fact, let me open the Excel sheet from our last tutorial. I still have this up here. Okay, so what we have done, let me zoom in so you can look at the header at least. Uh, so we said, okay, uh, we have a few users, user number one, two, three, four, and uh, the, they come in different ages. User number one is 23 years old, user number two, 65 years, 31 years old, and so on. And each user took certain amount of time to analyze a bunch of images. And uh, they analyzed these images before having any coffee, after having two cups of coffee, and four cups of coffee, and six cups of coffee. And then we tried to fit this to a linear regression and say, okay, uh, what, uh, what is the effect of time and coffee and age on the number of images analyzed, right? So later on, we actually took a, uh, a predicted, you know, a unknown value. Okay, if that is the case, what happens if I have someone who is 30 years old and uh, who takes like eight hours and then two cups of coffee, how many images are they going to analyze? So this is again a regression problem because we're trying to predict a continuous variable. But what if you say that, okay, the efficiency, if I add another column here and say uh, efficiency or productivity, let's just call this productivity and say 20 images is good, 14 images is bad, 18 is good. Let's say anything uh, at or above 15 or 17, let's say is good and below 17 is bad, right? So if you want to predict the productivity, this is a binary problem. So going back to the uh, uh, drawing board here, so this is a binary problem. Is this a bad or is this good? Okay, so this is binary classification. So for binary classification, logistic regression is amazing. Okay, so that's a great algorithm for binary classification. By the way, you may have multiple classification uh, problems in real life, which could be, okay, you have a, you have a cell, for example, uh, and then you have a nucleus and you have different organelles inside and you have different, you know, uh, organelles. So you say, okay, I want to detect, you know, the nuclei, I want to detect ribosomes, I want to detect, you know, a whole bunch of other things, mitochondria and other things. That could be a multi uh, classification problem. If you're not a biologist, again, if you, for example, are a material scientist, let's say you have uh, an image with a whole bunch of grains and uh, one grain has certain type of texture, the other one has certain type of texture, this one has a different uh, uh, I don't know, gray level texture or something. So because this one, let's say, is uh, aluminum, uh, you know, one, phase number one. Let's not get into actual material science. Phase number one, this is phase number two, this is phase number three. And you're trying to detect, okay, what are uh, 
uh, uh, you know, or different phases. If you're a geologist, same example, right? I mean, if you have a rock image and you have quartz and if you have uh, feldspars and you have clay minerals and you have, uh, you know, a different type of mineral, uh, let's say four or five different types of minerals and you're trying to, uh, based on image, you know, you're trying to identify or classify different, uh, different pixels based on a bunch of uh, features, okay? So uh, the one of the features can be the brightness of the image. The other feature can be the texture that's around that image. If the texture, for example, is pretty busy, maybe that is a clay mineral, yeah? If the texture is very smooth, maybe that is quartz, okay? Whatever the X independent variables are, you see in this example, independent variable is time. In the example I just gave you, the independent variables can be texture, the independent variable can be uh, can be uh, you know uh, the the brightness value or the pixel value uh, and so on. So you have a bunch of independent variables and you have uh, a dependent variable that you're trying to predict. In this case, uh, what is this quartz? Is this clay? In this example, is my cell a bad cell or a good cell? Right. So. Now that we overkilled the regression versus classification, <clears throat> let me get into let me get into uh, what logistic regression is. Again, let me remind you: linear regression, fitting it to a straight line. Okay, you have a bunch of data, fitting it to a straight line. Logistic regression. <clears throat> When you need a prediction, for example, if you have uh, going back to the good cells versus bad cells, there are various factors that you look into when you say, okay, is this a uh, normal cell or bad cell? And let's say one of the independent variables can be uh, the pixel value, like I just mentioned, okay, pixel value. Uh, or the gray level, if you want to call it. You can say that, okay, uh, in uh, and if your pixel value is, uh, let's say, uh, below a certain level, then these are all bad or zero, if you want to call it. And one or good is if you have a pixel value of certain you know, above certain level. And by the way, it's not just a pixel, right? So there are other parameters. So there may be like some overlap here. There, this may go up here. But then eventually, uh, what you want is a line that separates these two. Uh, or you can call it a decision boundary that kind of separates these two where you can say, okay, if it is below certain aspect, then, uh, you know, below certain level, then it is uh, bad, above certain level, then it's good. So this is basically logistic regression. And eventually what it does is it actually fits a sigmoid curve, something of this sort, of this shape. And you can say anything that's below this uh, is bad, anything that's above it is good. Okay, and how is the sigmoid function? I mean, straight line, we know the equation for straight line, right? I mean, y equal to, I mean, this is y, this is x. y equals to mx plus b or mx plus c, and b or c is nothing but this intercept here, okay? And the sigmoid function is actually uh, defined as sigma as a function of z equals 1 over 1 plus e to the power of minus z. Okay, so <clears throat> and again, E is nothing but the Euler number. It's 2.7 something something. Again, you can Google and find out. But uh, this is the sigmoid function. And this is literally nothing but think of uh, uh, replacing Z with your uh, st straight line equation. So you're taking the straight line and bending it such that it, it, it fits the sigmoid curve. So it's, it's almost like think of it as Y equals 1 plus 1 over 1 plus E to the minus of what is that equation? mx plus c, right? So mx plus c. So it can be this. So this is our uh, decision boundary, and I hope this makes sense to you, especially for you, you know, not, uh, for the people who did not take, you know, statistics as part of your uh, high school or college. This can be a bit uh, intimidating, but don't worry. Implementation of this in Python is super awesome, super simple. So. <clears throat> How does it find this uh, decision boundary? Again, uh, there is always a cost function. And remember, when it comes to linear regression, we said, okay, this data point is up here, but then my line is down here. So this is the amount of error that I am going to live with, right? So another line down here, this is the amount of uh, error that I'm going to have between the observed value and the predicted value, right? And so if you take Y predict minus Y observed, okay, that's the error. And uh, we say, okay, absolute error doesn't make sense, so we square it because 
in this case it can be negative error that can be positive deviation and we say i want to add that error for all of these data points and take an average so if i have n data points that's that so this is in a way the cost function okay again uh, don't worry if you don't understand any of this uh, so but i encourage you to understand this you know uh, or uh, google search find more documentation get more uh, understanding if you plan on using any of this as part of your research. So uh, this is the cost function, and we also learned about gradient descent. Uh, again, I'm not going to repeat this, but there is a lot of much better work out there uh, on, on these uh, topics. So gradient uh, descent, and this is gradient descent is nothing but a method. Think of it as a method that uh, minimizes the cost function to find the best fit here. So similarly, there is a cost function for this. Again, I'm not sure if I should go into um, the entire details of this for a couple of reasons. One, this is outside of the uh, uh, scope. And two, I'm not a very big expert on all the details here. So I don't want to give you misinformation. But anyway, so there is a cost function here that actually involves a logarithmic aspect. And uh, just to so, show you a quick uh, part. So if the value is, uh, let's say, the this is a log of y, right? I mean, and this is another log of y. So this is, this is log of y and uh, this is nothing but log of y. I think this is 1 minus y yeah so it's just the opposite way and the cost function is a combination of these two so think of combining these two and then you get something like this it's nothing but if the value is below if this goes from 0 to 1 if the value is zero, below 0 0.5 then take log y if the value is above 0 0.5 then take log 1 minus y so this is the cost function and again the gradient descent is going to be used to minimize this cost function Okay, so uh, I hope I did not uh, confuse any of you, <laughs> but uh, I thought it's, a, uh, uh, it's, it's important for you to understand the quick background before we jump on to uh, coding, uh, you know, doing any actual coding. Believe me, actual coding is literally, again, few lines of code, uh, so which is very easy. Let me summarize this. Logarithmic regression is a classification especially a binary classification tool where it classifies things into uh, let's say bad or good zero or one right so this is the binary classification unlike linear regression which is a regression problem which solves a regression problem by fitting a straight line uh, so we can predict a continuous value and how does this do uh, a logistic regression do this? I mean, it's basically uh, a sigmoid function, which defines the decision boundary between zero and one or bad or good, whatever the binary problem we are trying to solve, it fits the decision boundary between the two data sets, okay, for a given feature. Uh, the feature can be pixel value, the feature can be any of these independent variables uh, that affects, uh, uh, I mean, that, that's part of our experiment. And as usual, it has a cost function, and the cost function involves a logarithmic aspect to it. Again, please go ahead and look online if you are curious about what the cost function is for logistic regression and how is that cost function minimized. Remember, machine learning is all about having a cost function and then finding the minima is part of that cost function. And gradient descent is an amazing uh, method or algorithm that actually uh, helps us uh, find this uh, uh, minima in the cost function. So this is the theory behind logistic regression. So in the next tutorial, let's actually jump into uh, real coding. So if you like this uh, video, again, as usual, I request you to go ahead and like it uh, on YouTube. And if you like the series of videos I'm producing here, please subscribe to the channel. It definitely keeps me encouraged. Thank you very much.